the most powerful tool that you have right now in your life, in your body, is your mind. That's why the enemy fights you in your mind. The devil doesn't have to tie you up for you to be bound. He just has to tie up your head. With stress, with worry, with aggravation, with low self-esteem, with pettiness, with anger, with hostility, with rebellion. And he can make you physically sick because your mind is sick. Lay your hands on your head and say, give me a new mind. Give me a new mind means give me a new perspective. Give me a new perspective. Give me a new way of looking at my situation. Give me a new way of looking at my circumstances. Get my mind ready for this year because when I get this year, there's going to be blessings. There's going to be miracles. There's going to be opportunities. Oh, yes, there's going to be some struggles. There's going to be some challenges. There's going to be some tests. But even the struggles are an opportunity for me to show off the victory if my mind can handle the change. You can take it, you can make it. You can take it, you can make it. All right, you train, you fight way harder than those other guys, and you win. You get out from under. You can take it, you can make it. You can do this. Just gotta believe you can. There's some things I'm not taking with me in the new year. Everything that's inflexible and everything that's not ready and everything that's backwards and everything that's negative and everything that's condescending and everything that's carnal and everything that's holding me back, I refuse to take it over into another year and waste another new year with an old mind. Don't shape yourself around the comings and goings of this world. Don't shape your opinions and your attitudes around circumstances that you cannot change. If you go into another year and waste another year with the old mentality while somebody's in the hospital begging God for the opportunity that you have right now, you better step into this moment. You decide to stop looking for answers in other people and miracles somewhere down the yellow brick road and click the heels of your mind. You could have been free years ago. You can get your mind out. You can get your money out. You can get your family out. You can get your job out. You can get your career out. You can get your health out. You can get your prosperity out. You can get your mind out. No devil in hell. No weapon formed against you. No enemy that hates you. No witch that hates you can stop you from being free. If you can get your mind out, grab yourself by the hand and say we're coming out of this. Tell them I'm coming out here first. Fear is not real. The only place that fear can exist is in our thoughts of the future. It is a product of our imagination, causing us to fear things that do not at present and may not ever exist. We are all telling ourselves a story. But do not misunderstand me. Danger is very real, but fear is a choice. 
There are probably things that you're afraid of doing right now in your life, in your relationships, at work. And the fact that you're afraid, that's robbing you of all of the experiences that you want to have in your life. I mean, fear is something that stops us all. It's this fear of discomfort. People have this extreme feeling in their mind they want to avoid discomfort most people their associations are to avoid anything that's uncomfortable but it's so illogical because when you look at comfort and you look at success and progress and the eventual the feelings of accomplishment and of getting past certain hurdles and in, in terms of like how you feel about life a lot of those are connected to discomfort like discomfort is your friend the only way to deal with fear that I found in my life is a couple ways. One of those ways is to turn it on itself and ask yourself, what am I afraid of? If I'm afraid of that, I gotta be more afraid of what I'm gonna miss out on. So you gotta say, okay, what's the price if I just stay doing this? What's the price? What I need to really even get scared if I learn all this and I don't fall through. And then that fear will get you over your fear. It'll push you through. Turn fear on itself. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit myself in my rocking chair, I'm, I'm 85 years old, I'm looking back on my life, and I say, I didn't do this, or I did. Fear of failure is good. Fear of failure will keep you up at night, planning and rehearsing. Fear of failure will keep you training hard. It'll stop you from cutting corners. Fear of failure will keep you working and thinking and striving and relentlessly trying to be more prepared for battle. I want you to be afraid of failing. I want you to be terrified of sitting on your ass and doing nothing. That is what I want you to be afraid of, of waking up in six days or six weeks or six years or 60 years in being no closer to your goal you've made no progress that is what you need to be truly afraid of one of the real reasons we don't do the things that frighten us is because we are afraid of being judged we are afraid of failure we are afraid of success we are afraid of stumbling one of the reasons we don't really step into our heroic nature as human beings is because we're attached to the outcome. And so just developing the philosophy where you live in the moment, you do the things that frighten you, and you don't really worry about what happens. That will develop a sense of fearlessness and a sense of bravery. The breakthrough happens by conditioning your mind every day, by feeding it a role model or a story. It's putting yourself in a peak state and you fall through by getting physically strong. It's creating a little ritual of doing a little bit each day and then you get momentum. Get up and go. Take the risk, take the gamble, take the first step, take action. And don't let another day slip by. I found that with depression, one of the most important things you could realize is that you're not alone. You're not the first to go through it. You're not gonna be the last to go through it. Hold on to that fundamental quality of faith. Life gives us these events because there's an area of our life that has to grow. If someone really wants to feel alive, they want joy, they want happiness, they want to feel a sense that life is meaningful and alive, what does it take? I tell you one word, progress. One of the things that's causing this funk that people are in is that we're living our lives in these very unfulfilling ways where you're going to this office with artificial light and you're doing something you don't want to do all day long and then you get home and you're tired. And on top of that, you're eating shit. You're eating potato chips and you're drinking soda. Just go hike up to the top of a mountain and look out. You know, there's a reward that you get from that that is intensely, like, soul-filling. And you have a choice. You can be a victim and you can let it break you, or you can actually ask yourself, how can I leverage the pain? How can I leverage the darkness? 
so it grows me, so it makes me stronger, so it makes me wiser, so it allows me to tap into the greatest of virtues of humanity. It was so hard because people put me down. And I started believing that I was not good enough. I started believing that I was a failure. And the fear that we have is that we're going to be alone. There are some things in life that are out of your control that you can't change and you've got to live with. The choice that we have, though, is either to give up or keep on going. You, you might not even want to get out of bed in the morning. It might be that bad. Please remember this. Crisis comes to serve the person who wants to use it as fuel. When things go wrong, they always seem to happen at once and they just compound. And it's it's pretty easy sometimes to to feel beaten, but that doesn't mean give up. In fact, it means the opposite. It means it's time for you to fight harder, to dig in. It means it's time for you to go on the war path. Who you are today is no longer resourceful for who you're going to be, who you are to be next. For you to fulfill your greatest purpose here on this planet, in this lifetime, you have to have multiple deaths to immature versions of yourself so that you can be reborn as a stronger version of yourself. That's how the process goes. Who you are today might need to die for you to do what you need to do for the next phase. We are not designed to do things that are uncomfortable or scary or difficult. Our brains are designed to protect us from those things. And in order to change, in order to build a business, in order to be the best parent, the best spouse, to do all those things that you know you want to do with your life, with your work, with your dreams, you're going to have to do things that are difficult, uncertain, or scary. But if I fail, I try again, and again, and again. So as long as I try, there's always that chance of getting up. And it's not the end until you've given up. And just the fact that you're here should persuade you that you have another chance to get back up. When we close our mind to what is possible for us, closes off the genius that resides and lives in each and every one of us. You would be amazed at what the average brain is capable of. The mind is the battleground. The fight is in your mind.